I spent $2,000 in a week at a conference with some of the most successful business owners in the world. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys the three biggest lessons that I learned and how you can immediately begin to apply these lessons into your own business to make you more money and ultimately achieve more success. Now, these are in no particular order with regards to the importance of them. However, I did save my favorite lesson for last. So if you want to learn the four moves that'll get you to a million dollars a year, stick around until the end of the video. If you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, and collecting payments all for free, check out Quote IQ. It'll be linked in the comments section and the description as well. Now, this first lesson comes from a YouTuber named Preston Plays, and he says to treat your business like a business and not a side hustle. And we can do this in a couple of different ways. Firstly, we want to identify our workflows and track our tasks and time. When we do these kind of things, it's going to allow us to see where we're not being efficient within our day to day activities and where we're losing time throughout the day. So a lot of people will, you know, take extra time for lunch or they'll lose time on the phone or they'll lose time on maybe websites they shouldn't be on. So when we track our time, we identify our workflows. We're able to kind of pinpoint these things in our business and we're able to eliminate them. Next, we want to learn how to delegate. We want to identify steps in our workflow that are easy to delegate to others and prioritize high income activity. So for a business owner, if you're doing things in your day-to-day -day activities that aren't generating a large portion of income, we need to take those, standardize those, and hand those off to people that we pay less money to. And that way we can focus on, like I said, those high income activities. So when we standardize, our workflows, we're able to create SOPs or standard operating procedures for doing different tasks. So for example, if it was like gutter cleaning, we would it would be like step one, take out the ladder. Step two, put the ladder on the gutter. Step three, empty the gutter. These standard operating procedures allow us to standardize the way that we do certain tasks. So that way we can hand those off and delegate those to other people. And they're able to pick those up and perform them in the same way that we would. So by figuring out different things that we can standardize within our workflows, it's then going to make it easier for us to delegate those tasks to other people. And then lastly, the biggest businesses in any industry build teams. This guy Preston has over a hundred person team. And basically what he's done is removed himself from any tasks that he's not proficient in or aren't really the big picture items for the business. So the owner needs to focus on the work that they are best at and build a team around them to facilitate everything else. And this is ultimately how how we scale a business and how we can exit a business is by building teams, building systems and figuring out how we can be proficient with our time, energy and efforts. So that was lesson number one, treat your business like a business and not a side hustle. Oftentimes I'm guilty of this. I just do whatever I feel like doing and um, I don't delegate tasks. I don't have standard operating procedures. And this guy really opened my eyes up to how unorganized I am with my current business and how I need to get more serious about that. Now, lesson two is from a billionaire YouTuber and he says the most successful businesses in the world follow a simple system called the physics of progress. Step one of the physics of progress is to get clarity, getting crystal clear on what it is that we want. An example of this is like, I want more customers to come into my business. We need to get crystal clear on exactly what it is that we want. I want to generate a hundred more leads into my business every single month. And then step two is to identify the obstacle that is in between where we are and where we ultimately want to be. So if our goal is to generate a hundred extra leads a month, what is standing in the way? Is it the fact that we need to diversify where our leads are coming in? Is it that we need to put out more videos, put out more social media content? So step two is to identify the obstacle that is in between where you are and where you ultimately want to be. So if we know that we want to get hundred leads a month into our business is the obstacle that, you know, we need to get better at creating social media content is the obstacle that we need more ways for people to flow into our business is the obstacle that we need to, you know, send out more emails or become better at running ads or Whatever the obstacle is, we need to identify that. And then the next thing is we're going to attack it. Now, a big piece of advice that he mentioned during his speech is we don't want to deal in emotions. We want to deal in data. Oftentimes, we let the way that we feel get in the way of the practical things that we need to be doing in order to make progress within our business. You know, we get our ego all tied up in what it is that we're doing. And then as a result of that, we make excuses that are external to ourselves as to why we're not doing better. So, for example, if I was a business owner, I wanted to get 100 extra leads into my business business a month, I might say, well, you know, the problem is Facebook. They're too expensive. Or the problem is those flyers that we passed out, the company that printed them didn't do a good job. When in reality, maybe we didn't pass out enough flyers. Maybe we haven't learned enough about how to run Facebook ads. So we want to differentiate our ego from data. We want to be data driven rather than ego driven. So we want to make adjustments, make changes so that way we can see a better return on our flyers or see a better return on our Facebook ads um, instead of tying in our emotions and getting emotional about how to resolve the issue. 